worshipping in the Old Testament, part two, from Abel to the Lord Jesus Christ. What is exactly worship? Who is to be worshipped and in which way? Where and when? What is it that hinders worship and how does sin and idolatry play a role in church worship? Let me think about that. The answers on the above questions can be found in the very first part of the Bible. Of course, while reading these first pages, we meet the creator of all things. He reveals himself to be the reader's conscience as plural, referring to his being as us. We made the, church, the, the earth. Let us make the earth a man. In the New Testament, we become more acquainted with this creator of heaven and earth, who is called the Lord Jesus Christ, also known as the third person of the divine trinity. You can find it in the next verses, Genesis 1 and John 1, Acts 17 and Colossians, and Hebrew chapter 1, verse 1 to 3 and verse 10. The Apostle Paul stated that by faith he can be known as Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, such as is written in 1 Corinthians. And in the letter of the Hebrews is written, through whom he also made the world or the universum. In Hebrew 1 verse 2, do you see that? Therefore, all sacrifices and worship in the Old Testament refer to the Lord Jesus Christ, being God manifested in the flesh, as is written in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. He is the Lamb of God, who took the sin of the world to the cross of Calvary for an atonement of our transgressions. In John 1 and 2 Corinthians 5, verse 18 to 19, you see that. But think about this. Stop this video for a while before you go to the next slide and think and meditate on the verses because it is very important to take it in your conscience, in your mind and in your heart. May the Lord bless that. The altar and the offerings in the Old Testament. To understand what people felt at their worshipping servants, we must begin to read the book of Genesis. This book tells of the initial forms of worship and sacrifice and given by the descendants of Adam and Eve. The atonement sacrifices. The first hint to the Lord Jesus as an atonement offer for the sin of independence and rebellious is recognized by the fact that God covered the sinful man with tunics of skin. Here's a clear explanation for this act. An innocent being had to die to cover the guilt and bareness of the sinful man before a holy God. Now, acquainted with the awareness of evil, the eating for the forbidden of knowledge of good and evil, man also got to know its consequences, eternal death, as is written in Romans 5 and Romans 6 and 1 Corinthians 15. The last four books of Moses report how praise and worship given by his people was put to God's standards. Laws and rules were introduced, sharply described in the so-called Law of Moses, which men handed to him by angels. The sense of Aaron and as a priest played a significant role in the worshipping sacrifice. They were to receive the skin of the burn of it, which referred to the fact that, like Adam and Eve, they too could not appear in the sight of the Lord without the covering which spoke of God's sacrificial lamb. This explanation shed lids on Paul's world, words. 
and that you put on the new man in Christ. Knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Let me think about the verses we have seen now. Let me meditate and discuss with one another what it means for your personal life and how to bring it in practice. Since the fall of man, humankind can't find atonement for sin, but by receiving the sacrificial offer from God's hand in obedience to faith. Rejection of his, this gift is like a reaction of free love and grace, a big sin. In that case, no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, is written, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment, such as is written by the Apostle Hebrew 10, verse 26 to 31. To be under the judgment of God is to be in an eternal darkness, separated from God. Only the covering by the righteousness of Christ, the Lamb of God, opens a way to renew the communication with the Holy God. The acceptable sacrifice for God. After the fall, Abel and all men after him who have been justified in Christ, understood that man could exist before God only on one condition. This condition consisted of a blood sacrifice. Although the seemingly God-fearing but self-centered Cain also offered a sacrifice. It was but his own work and righteousness. Man, however, is not justified by works, but by faith. You can read that in Ephesians 2, verse 1, 8 and 9, and Galatians 3, special the Galatians letter, verse 3, 8 and 10, and Romans 9, verse 30 to 32. As soon as Cain understood this by seeing God's reaction to the blood offering of Abel, he became jealous and killed his brother. You can read that. Even since there a several severe battle between the world religions focused on law and the preachers of God's grace. This battle will come to an end with the second coming of Christ, who will return to judge the living and the dead according to what is written of their works in God's book. You can see that in Revelations and in Genesis 4, Matthew 7, Matthew 13 and Acts 17, and of course the end of the book of Revelation. The call to repent and accept God's grace based on the sacrifice of Christ Jesus can be read in the first book of the Bible, up to Revelations, the last book of the Bible. And again, stop this video for a while and think about the verses. The condemnation of the flood, flood. The second time we read of a sacrifice, it concerns Noah's sacrifice. Sacrifice he brought had been selected long beforehand. It was with him in the ark already, and it was slaughtered immediately after the condemnation of the flood. In Genesis 8 verse 20 and 21 you can read it. Noah was called a preacher of righteousness because the, he urged the people to abstain from sinning when these sins had reached a certain degree in God's view. The flood came over the earth. Noah and his family were saved by faith. With thanksgiving and praise Noah offered a blood sacrifice to God right after the cleansing of the earth. However, human weakness to the lure of sin prevailed again. When reading the Bible, the consequences of laziness, earthly joy and lack of understanding in combination with excessive thinking are obvious time after time till now due to the half-hearted attitude and slowness 
we find ourselves helpless and bare before God and people. When this happens, a believer often feels bereft of his testimony and respect. Nevertheless, this can be restored by God's loving discipline. You can read all these verses and think about that carefully in Genesis 9, verse 18 to 25, Romans 6, verse 12 to 15, and Hebrew 12, verse 6 to 13. The forms of worship in the Old Testament were of a sacramental intermediating kind. Since Calvary, however, only the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ is the panacea of grace to be saved. And the Apostle John puts it in these words, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Read that carefully in John 3 verse 16, and let it be in your mind, heart and conscience. And stop a while again, this video so that you discuss with one another and think about it and mediate it and ask yourself if you all have already that taken of given Lamb of God as a sacrifice for your sin. Why not? Why not? Now. You can do that now. Because the Lord can come every time and then it is too late. But Think about it, pray for it, and confess your sin, and accept the sacrifice God has given for your well-being and cleansing of your soul. Now we will think about the sacrament or memorial table. Memorial table. The Lord Jesus is the bridge between the ceremonial sacrifice in the Old Testament and the one sacrifice in the New Testament. Therefore, the New Testament recognized the Lord Jesus as God manifested in flesh. We mentioned that already that it is written in 1 Timothy 3 verse 16, but also in John 1, of course. There is a difference between the act of conversion and the happy event of being born again. The latter involves no human choice but an act of God, as is written in John chapter 1, verse 12 and 13, to be born again from above. In John 3, verse 3 and 5, you can see that how the Lord Jesus explained that to the Pharisee Nicodemus. The difference between that, you can see that repentance, rebirth, it is our responsibility to repent and an act in obedience as an answer to the preaching of the gospel. Therefore, the Holy Spirit is given to those who accept the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus in faith, in obedience. In 1 John 1 verse 12, you see that the sacrifice was big enough, great enough, for everyone in this world. But you have to accept it. Rejected it, there is no hope. In Ephesians 1 verse 13 you see that after being born again, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. He will indwell in you. Then it is God's responsibility to give us the so-called born again experience. This happened because he himself do this work. It is through the preaching of his word. This also concerns our willing and doing, as is written in Philippians 2, verse 12 and 13. But still we are responsible for our deeds and wrong thoughts. We must realize that repenting is needed, giving over our will in God's hand, with confessing of our sins. You see that also in Romans 9 and Galatians 3 and Revelations 22 and Psalm 81, you see that. And even about confession of sin in Psalm 52 and of 51, better said, 
and Psalm 31. In the New Testament, we find a new dimension of faith and worship. The sacrificial offer of the Lord Jesus Christ and our reaction to that is called worship in spirit and in truth, as is written in John 4. And it is not anchored in works of law, what we will do, but it is a gift of God in the Lord Jesus, because the Lord Jesus, every time, every time, we have to go to the cross to understand what he did for us and what is our responsibility. Again, think about this. From Jesus' birth to his cross and resurrection. Let me think about from Christ Jesus' birth to his death on the cross, the Holy Spirit convinced people of sin, righteousness, and condemnations, particularly after Pentecost. This people came to disagreements between the, the difference, to know the difference between spirit, soul, and flesh, and their conscience is practiced to admit guilt and sin causing them to openly confess and repent of it. You can see that in John 16 and 8, Acts 19, verse 18 to 20, that the people came to know that they were guilty and they confessed openly what they had done. Everyone who believed and accepts God's grace is saved. John 5, verse 24. The salvation involves convicted Jews as well as pagans. All believers are gathered in only one church, referred to as the body of Christ, the temple of the Holy Spirit, or the house of God. Later on, we will explain that more in details. Unfortunately, the unity in Christ is not clearly perceptible. Only a new awareness of our covenant with Christ will empower our Christian testimony. Therefore, we can state that worship from Abel to Noah is not only a personal but also a communal event. To pray is often related to asking, whereas worshiping emphasizes the answer that has been found in Christ Jesus as our Lord. The communal sacrifice service after Pentecost is expressed in the offering of prayer, psalms, praises, usually combined with the Lord's Supper, as you can find in 1 Corinthians 11. Read the verses carefully and think about it and discuss with one another. And now the questions of self-teaching. In which way was God honored by the first man on earth and for what purpose? Read the verses carefully and think about that. And open your Bible and read it and find the answers because the Bible gives always the answers and the Bible explains them themselves. And then the second question is which alterations were implemented in the sacrificial purposes by the law of Moses? In Leviticus 1 and Deuteronomy 12, read that. And three, what is the meaning of Passover and who could participate? Very important, also in our time. In 1 Corinthians 11 and in 1 Corinthians 10, you see that. And in 1 Corinthians 5. And five, what was the consequences if one participated unsanctified in a sacrificial service? Again, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 29 to 13, you see the, the, the importance to see it yourself if you are really use the, the sacrifice, the, the table of the Lord, and to remember the Lord's death when you do that, and to proclaim the Lord that, that you realize if your, your heart, your conscience is clean. And when it is not clean, do not use the table of the Lord and used to go to the one 
you offended and confess your sin. And point seven, in which changes you can be noticed between the worship service of the Old and the New Testament after the resurrection and the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, um, I forgot uh, question six. How in times of deterioration can God still be honored by his alarmed believers, even in our time? So a lot of questions, a lot of Bible verses, and in the Bible verses you find the answers and you can send it to me by adelam.holland at gmail.com to my name, Cornelis Beekhuizen. Thank you for listening and thinking about these questions.